Well, does everyone remember this painting? Well, this is what we're going to be working on today. We are going to finish this painting, and so welcome to Painting with Yovette. I'm glad you could join me today. Let's go get started. Well, I'm going to share a story with you in a few minutes here, but what I want to do first is just get you started on what I'm doing here. This painting I did, um, as you remember, it was about a month ago. And uh, first I did the sky for you, and then I did the mountain part. And so now I'm finishing this up. Well, of course, the paint has dried. And so what I've done here, I'm just taking clear oil medium. And I'm just spreading it on the lower part of the canvas and just a little tiny bit on the mountains. Now the reason I'm doing that is to put some moisture back into the canvas so that I can spread the paint easier. Otherwise it's pretty hard to spread. So, and then also I wanted to add just a little bit of color uh, down below. And so I added a little bit of the peach and now I've got a little bit of the uh, bluish color down underneath to be the water part. So anyway, that, that gets you up to speed on what's going on so far. <laughs> um, I'm, you can probably just see what I'm doing and just kind of follow along with me. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story. I've had so many questions. People write to me all the time and, and phone call me and whatnot and ask me what is, um, what's going on with me and am I happy and, and um, just where am I at these days. So I'm going to follow up with that. And I will tell you, uh, losing my husband was just extremely difficult. It's probably one of the most horrible, difficult things I've ever been through. But the Lord has been with me. I have come through it beautifully. He is with me every day. And um, things have just, they're coming along very nicely. And I have a very good life right now. I'm very happy. And uh, not that I don't go through depression once in a while. I think all of us go through that. You know, it just, it just happens. It's unavoidable. But anyway, so once I left uh, the, uh, the uh, senior housing development that my husband and I lived in, my sister's husband, I think I told you this before, my sister's husband passed away at the same time my husband did. Now this was actually two over, a little over two years ago already. Oh my gosh, the time just flies so darn fast. Anyway, um, because of both of our husbands passed away and she had a big home and I had a big home and, and both of us, neither of us girls could keep that up. So, so we both um, decided to just buy another house together and so we did that, and it has worked out beautiful. Uh, Sis and I have a lot of the same things in common. We, we like the same things. We, we share the art experience together. We do a lot of computer things together. We like the house that we have. We like the neighborhood. Uh, we just, uh, there's a, it's just really a great life right now. I couldn't be happier. So anyway, <laughs> I just thought I'd share that with you. That's where I'm at these days. Um, life is good. I can't complain. And if I did, it wouldn't do any good anyway, would it? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I think I would like to tell you a story, uh, another story about how my husband and I met. Gosh, this was going way back to... Uh, 1976 is when we actually met and um, most of you know I was a men's hairstylist at that time and I, well, I have been a men, was a men's hairstylist for over 30 years but uh, anyway I had I worked in a very very nice shop it was kind of an upper end shop and we had uh, very good clientele well, one day my boss came back and she said, uh, Hey, Yovette, can you take a customer for me? He missed his appointment and um, he needs a haircut really bad. So I looked at my calendar. Um, yeah, I had some time. So she gave me his phone number and told me to call him. 
So I did, and I told him I had an 11 o'clock that morning if he was available, and he was. And so he decided that he was going to be there, and he, he showed up. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, he walked through the door and he, he reminded me of Paul Bunyan. You know what Paul Bunyan looks like? You know, big and husky and broad shoulders and skinny hips and he was wearing a plaid shirt and blue jeans and logger boots and, <laughs> and a hat. You know, that just that Paul Bunyan look. Anyway, so Carson comes into the shop and um, he, he's greets me and says hi and all that and you know the minute we saw each other it was like it was like um, I don't know how you explain it but there was just something there and maybe it was in his eyes I don't know but he sat down and we started talking oh my gosh we had the best conversation for the first half hour or 45 minutes I guess it was his appointment well, anyway, he was getting ready to leave when we were when I was all done. And he says, I want you to book me again for two weeks. And I said, two weeks? Why? I said, you won't have anything to cut in two weeks. <laughs> and he said, no, I want, to book, I want you to book me in two weeks from now. And I want you to book me for every two weeks at the same time. So, okay, I did that. <laughs> And by golly, I'll tell you what, he, he showed up every two weeks and probably just about for the rest of his life <laughs> because he wouldn't let me stop cutting his hair. Uh, he never went to another barber or a men's hair stylist after that first haircut I gave him. So I guess he liked what I did, huh? <laughs> anyway, that's a little romantic story. Um, we just we fell in love, and uh, he was so easy to talk to, and he was so helpful in my early years, when I was you know struggling and starting out. I was I was new to the Portland, Oregon area, and um, gosh, he just helped me get situated. He helped me with starting my new shop. Um, I had a nice five chair men's hairstyling shop. Um, he just was wonderful. I, get, I just can't say enough good things about him. I miss him terribly every day. And, uh, you know, I guess someday we'll be back together again. At my age, probably not too long from now, you know, that time just comes up pretty fast. <laughs> so anyway, well, that's my story. So let's go ahead and go back to the painting. So uh, hopefully you could follow along with what I've done so far. Uh, now I've got the grass in and I'm up to doing the trees. I've got a little close up here for you. Now this is an uppy tree, what I call a happy tree, because I'm actually using the brush and just kind of pushing it upwards a little bit. Um, I really like the, this tree better than the down tree or a, what I call a sad tree. My happy tree and my sad tree. I like the, uh, the happy trees. And uh, I'm doing this with a fan brush and I'm going to put in three trees here. And uh, you can just watch what I'm doing. When I started out this scene uh, doing the background, uh, first I did the sky, like I mentioned, and then I did the mountains, and I really was not sure what I was going to do with this painting or where I was going to go with it because um, pfft, I just didn't know. I had no ideas. And so, you know what I started doing? I started sketching out some ideas. I made a copy of this painting uh, from from a, I took a photo of it first and then I made a copy on the computer and uh, then I printed it out and I you know you know what one of those plastic sleeves looks like for uh, an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper you know it's a protector a plastic protector well I stuck this sheet of paper into this plastic protector and um, then I just sketched out a couple of ideas with black vine charcoal and that 
uh, that really worked out great. I, I just, um, I had fun doing that. Funny thing is, I never did use any of the ideas I sketched out, but, but I did them anyway, so that was good. So if you have, if you're looking for an idea, uh, try sketching out some, uh, just making a print of your painting and then sketch it out on, um, sketch over it with a piece of plastic. It works really good. That black, black fine charcoal is what I use most of the time for my sketching, and uh, I love that stuff. I get it from Amazon. It's not very expensive, and it comes off really easy if you need to take it off. So anyway, I've got these trees in, and now I'm doing the highlighting just with a little yellow, a little white, and a little green and just in the same motion doing that little upward motion and tapping these trees out and forgive my head in the way my my I still have not got my camera placed exactly where I need it so that my head doesn't keep bobbing in and out I'm so sorry about that one of these days I'm going to find the perfect fit where it's just going to be beautiful Okay, now using the one inch brush and some white and yellow into that same pile, I want to start making some little highlights on the grass. And this is a very, very light tapping motion. If your paint is too thick, sometimes it helps to add just a dab of thinner, just a tiniest little bit of thinner, and then the paint will come off much easier uh, on the canvas. But just tap in some grasses wherever you think the grasses should go. You can add a little bit of red to this if you want, just to change the color a little bit. I decided to call this one Peach Mountain because I really love that peach color that is behind in the background. So now let's add a little bit of land. I'm just using my knife and uh, my dark browns. And just pull that knife ever so lightly across the canvas to make this rocky ground. And now I want to add just a tiny, tiny bit of white and just highlight this ever so slightly. So I need to put this light brown in the background just above the water line. It'll just make that water stand out a lot more and make the land stand out better. Now using both of those dark browns, adding a little bit of white to that, and we're just going to highlight these little uh, ground areas as kind of make it look like little rocks or stones just along the shoreline it's a very very light touch and I'm just pulling across at a slant
And I was thinking about what I could do with this painting to make it a little bit more fun and interesting. And, and so what I came up with was these little fishing boats in the background. And that's what I'm going to be doing, just adding those little fishing boats. So now I just want to add a little bit more highlight here. It just came out uh, not quite light enough for me. And a little bit more back here in the background. Yeah, I think that's looking very nice. So now just with my one inch brush, pulling down a little bit on those edges so that we can just make a little reflection. And then just lightly brush across and always go from the outside edge to the center. That way you don't have any little accidents in the water. <laughs> and then let's just highlight this lower ground here a little bit because some of that would be reflected. And then just pull down and across again from the outside edge to the center. Now into my really dark color again and if your pile gets too spread out just scoop it up and kind of put it all back together again. <clears throat> You'd be surprised how much paint you can get into that little pile once you gather it up. So let's start the hillside on the other side here. <clears throat> and this is just a tapping motion. It will probably be easier to do uh, this tapping with the one, uh, the two inch brush, you know, the big brush. But I tell you what, I hate cleaning those big brushes. <laughs> and so uh, that's mostly why I use the small brushes. I don't mind cleaning the small ones. They're very easy to clean. But yeah, I don't like cleaning the big brushes. Lightly pull up just to get that little grassy feel. Not pulling up very far, like just maybe, oh, between a quarter and a half inch. And now just adding a little bit of white and yellow and a touch of thinner just to thin it out some so it'll spread easy. Let's add a little bit of highlights into the grass. Be sure to leave some of the dark because if you don't have any dark, your light's not going to show. And now back into my dark again, turning my brush upside down after I load it. Just going to make a tree here. And I'm just pushing upward, spreading these branches out. Make a few little bushes and little tappy grasses and things down here on this edge. And keep this back, this lower back corner a little bit darker. And now let's do a little bit of highlighting. Some yellow, some ochre, <clears throat> a little touch of red. 
Again, the brush is upside down and I'm just lightly pushing upward. Now don't get that don't get too much thinner in your paint because if you do it it'll get too wet and it won't it won't uh, tack on there properly. It has to be just the right amount of thinner to make it thin enough. And just adding a little bit more to the grass. Now let's add a <clears throat> let's add a few stones. Just pull that across the grass area. And just put these wherever you think they need to be. And now let's do a little bit of highlighting. I've just grabbed a little white, mixed it with my browns. And this is a very, very light touch. You hear me say that all the time, but I, I really stress the lightness of your touch. If you push on that knife at all, what it does is it just spreads the paint around and you don't get that pretty breaking And uh, now my favorite part of the painting always. We need to add just a few little birds. Let's put one here. And here. Uh, one on the other side. I think we should even have a couple of little ones down in this foreground area. But these are way far away so they'd be a lot smaller. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing. I do a brand new painting on the first of every month and um, it's always something different and interesting. <laughs> and now I want to add just a little bit of peach color to the mountains. And so I'm taking a little red. I had a little yellow on the brush already, so that's great. That'll keep it toned down. And then because that mountain paint is already dry, I can go ahead and go over the top of this with just a little very light highlighting to just bring in some of that background peach color into the mountain itself. I think that adds a nice little touch to it. Let's add some tree trunks to the trees here. Just intermittent. Don't place them not, not big, thick, heavy um, tree branches, or uh, tree trunks, I'm sorry. Uh, just little light touches. And then I want to touch a little bit down here in the water too. Because that would be reflected. And I also decided I want to add some rock down here because um, it's just, I don't know, it just needs something right here in this area. So some dark brown and then a little highlighting. Oh, 
again very light touch yeah I think that added a lot so now let's do our little fishing boats and I'm using a thin down brown I've added some thinner to it so it'll spread fairly easy and I've got a very small round brush a very as a short haired brush uh, probably what you'd call a little detail brush or a miniature brush and on this boat here I get just the shape that I want and um, add the little man and then just with a light touch just bring that fishing pole up and then down so it looks like a line is in the water and I've only got one little person in this boat I suppose I could have had a sailboat in here too but it looks like the water is too calm for a sailboat so this is just a plain old just a little old fishing boat my sister's husband used to love to fish oh my goodness he just adored fishing he would sit out in the boat all day I think if you'd let him <laughs> anyway let's do a second boat here this one's a little closer so it's just a tiny bit larger and get the shape of a boat as best you can and let's have two people in this one maybe it's a dad and his son maybe it's a husband and a wife who knows <laughs> oh. and so one one person is holding the line out this way and the other person is having the fishing line out on the other side of the boat and that is perfect I love it sorry my canvas is wiggling Oh, that turned out nice that's a nice little addition to the painting I think so here's the finished painting I hope you enjoyed it and um, there's a couple of other ideas for you um, I'll put um, I'll tell you what I'll put the link to the first part the the sky and the second part the mountain those were the two parts before this painting so anyway have a great day thank you for joining me Bye.